Jordan Peele's latest film, Nope, is out in theaters, and we will take any excuse to do a UFO effect, so... We've done a few alien ship type effects over the years. But I love the classic style of the UFOs and the strong blue night shots that they have in this film with the UFO in almost a silhouette. It really gives a sense of ominous mystery. We also borrowed some inspiration from this Prometheus shot too because it's awesome and no other reason is needed. When we shot, we lucked out with the weather. Thompson had a nice and cloudy sky, which means we won't have to do a total sky replacement in the end. But if that's something you might need, you can check out the tutorial in the notes below. But with our footage in After Effects, we create a new comp, and because of our camera move, we will opt for a 3D track. In the past, we often had tracking issues when a shot gradually becomes just sky filling the entire frame. So to get a better result, we can first use a curves effect and crush the contrast in the sky to give more detail for our track. Right click and pre-compose, moving all attributes to the new comp, then right click, track and stabilize, track camera. Hopefully you should have a decent track on your sky, so choose a point, right click and create null and camera, then you can remove the curves effect in the pre-comp. While we don't need to replace the sky, we do want some more detail in the top right for where our UFO will go behind the cloud. So on location, we also shot a different section of sky to comp in. Using a still frame from that, we'll drop it into the comp and make it a 3D layer, change position, scale, and rotation how you like, and mask the areas you want to keep. We'll be using Element 3D for the UFO by creating a new solid layer and adding the element effect. You could get a 3D model of a spaceship from places like CG Trader or Turtle Turbo Squid, but to closer match the Nope vibe, we'll create a sphere model inside of Element, increasing the segments and scale. For the material, we'll use the Pro Shader 2 Metal Black preset to give a scratchy metallic look, and we'll increase the reflectivity amount in the material settings. With the model selected, go to the UV mapping section, and if you increase the repeat values, you can scale down the material, increasing detail, although too much will make the repetition obvious. To make this into a disc, shape, we can just squeeze the Y axis, but with this being a sphere, we are getting this pinching on the top and bottom, which from our camera angle, we might end up seeing. So first we're going to rotate the sphere 90 degrees and then change the Y scale, which has now moved the pinching to the sides, which will be less noticeable. For the environment, we didn't get our own HDRI on location, but we can use Polyhaven and browse through their HDRIs, which have a ton of categories. For our scene, we're looking at outdoor and overcast, then just browsing through the selections until we found one that we felt worked well enough for our shot. I'm going to download that and then in Elements, select this as a new environment map. We altered contrast, brightness, saturation, and you also have the same UV controls as before if you want to change the repetition or offset. But hold on, let's set the mood. We got that music from our friends at Musicbed, one of the best resources for licensed music for any project, or just to create your own playlist and set the mood while working on moody sci-fi visuals, like my playlist here that I made for my short film, Sentry. I've been using Musicbed for about eight years now, pulling from everything from a normal weekly episode to our short films, again, like Sentry, where the entire score was built from their music. They have all kinds of talented artists and musicians who are passionate about their work, and they curated a roster of over 1,000 authentic and relevant artists. Artists that I even listen to just because, like Cody Fry or the incredible Chad Lawson. Finding music is incredibly easy with their browse and search tools built with the filmmaker in mind. Use anything from genre, mood, to advanced filters like BPM, and they have a great list of curated playlists from filmmakers, again, like myself. You can find the link to mine in the notes below. Then if you still need help finding what you need, their team can help with complimentary song searches. So check out the 
the link in our description for more info and use the coupon code FILMRIGHT at checkout to get one month free when you purchase an annual subscription. Logo. Back in After Effects, under group one, particle look will increase the size and in group utilities will create a group null. We can use this to control the placement and animation of our UFO, which for this shot will be a very simple two keyframe animation. At the start of the timeline, we'll move it into our first position and set a keyframe. Then at the end of the timeline, we'll change it to our final position and use this handle to add a slight curve to the path. Enable motion blur, and now we have a smooth floating animation from start to finish. We will also go into the render settings and in the physical environment, you can change the rotation for the reflection as well as animate with keyframes, which we'll do for the X rotation to increase the value over time, giving us a subtle shift in reflection as the UFO rises. Under lighting, we'll lower the brightness and change the rotation values too, just to have our little highlight spots on top as a subtle accent, which will also help after the darker grade we're gonna be adding later. In the fog dropdown, enable fog, change the color by selecting part of our background close to the UFO and boost opacity. The fog distance and range values will depend on your 3D camera and distance of your object. So our values are gonna be a little bit different than yours, but you can just scroll through to choose how much of your model you want to be in the fog and how smooth the fall off is. Because our UFO moves closer to us throughout the shot, that also means it will gradually become less foggy. And we don't need to keyframe anything as that happens automatically. Under output, we'll increase multi-sampling and super sampling, check enhanced and boost highlight compression since our scene is overcast and dull. To closer match our flat log footage, we're gonna use a curves effect, lower the brightness and lift the shadows. We'll keyframe this to get a bit brighter in the mids a few seconds in, then use another curves to lower the reds and greens and boost the blue. Use a tint effect at about half strength to desaturate and a fast blur effect to soften the UFO slightly. To place the clouds in front, we're gonna duplicate the sky layer and move above the UFO. Using the pen tool, we'll draw around the area we want to keep in front of the UFO, set the mask to intersect and feather, use the roughen edges effect, increasing border and scale, as well as lowering the feather to give us a more displaced edge. As we mentioned, we did wanna add some interaction with the cloud similar to this Prometheus shot, and we found the easiest way to do this is with stock footage. We'll be using the Smoke 4 and Smoke 5 asset from our Smoke stock footage available on our Tryon Digital store, but the same process will work with any Smoke stock that you use. Double click to open in its own window and skim through until you find a section you want to use and set an endpoint. We'll drop it into the comp and slow it down with frame blending enabled to make it smooth, then make it a 3D layer. Change position, scale, and rotation to the cloud area and set to screen. We then did the same with the other smoke asset using a few duplicates placed and angled differently just to add some extra detail for that interaction, as well as using another duplicate placed in the center with lower opacity to act as faint atmosphere. We used one final duplicated mask with a higher feather and linked to the element group null so that it moves with our UFO. This just adds a bit of atmosphere falling off of our model. Now we're gonna duplicate the camera and select all but the last smoke layer linked to the group null and right click, pre-compose as a smoke luma comp, move this above the UFO solid and set that to luma inverted matte. This uses the areas of smoke to subtract from the UFO and you can use a curves effect on the pre-comp to control how strong or how faint it will be. To complete the look, we used a new adjustment layer with Red Giant's optical glow for a faint haze over everything, as well as another adjustment layer for our grade. Again, going for a bluish night look similar to Note, but obviously if we were going for a different vibe or time of day, we could completely change the look. The same goes for the UFO. We can easily swap it out for an actual spaceship model to get a different result or just rotating the disc we do have 90 degrees to get an arrival type craft instead. For this second shot, most of the steps are the same, but this time, instead of a 3D track, we're gonna use Mocha to track this area and apply it to a null. We could copy our UFO and group null from the other comp and link the UFO to the null, then just change some of the placement and animation to match the distance as well as the fog settings, light rotation, and the curves to make it sit better in this shot. We did the same process for the clouds again, but linked 
to a duplicate of the Mocha track this time rather than a duplicate of the camera. Pre-compose together, set the UFO layer to Luma inverted matte again and use curves if needed to boost the strength. We also tracked a part of the car with Mocha to add some dirt to the windshield in the foreground. In the new Smoke Luma comp, we used this texture linked to the new track and added a tint, a few copies of curves and an invert effect to give us some grime details. Then we set to screen and lowered the opacity. Then enable motion blur for all of these layers. And now we have both the clouds and windshield textures feeling like they're in front of the UFO. Again, we're gonna complete this look with both a glow and a grade. But that's it, some sexy sci-fi love. If you do try this effect in any way, tag us on all the things. We love to see those social channels in the notes below. And as always, if you're not subscribed, consider doing that and hit the bell button to be notified when we put up more content. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.